when you say call me the encyclopedia of english i think that's just a humble beginning i come here with an experience of 10 years of formal and informal teaching of english language and literature working very closely with kids starting from age group of let's say 6 years old and taking it up to 20 years of age and beyond and you know the beauty of all of it is you enjoy so the first and the foremost my thing dear my teachers is that the love and passion for the language so this is samriddhi sagar from ratna sagar for you and before we begin let me tell you i have no connections with raman and sagar because more often i've been asked by people that oh, i hail from that family because ramayana has been taking a huge hit on doordarshan in the last few months but i happen to take it all in my stride and then say okay any linklings any linkages that you want to draw i'll be happy to take it but just like amit say i we are here together to discuss about something that is the backbone of all languages that is very important and integral part of the language that we would be talking about today and that my dear teachers is the grammar you know grammar when it comes to grammar we as teachers feel that probably this is one of the things containing rules talking about uh, structures probably practice exercises and every other thing that goes into play but more importantly is what i can say is that today when we both and we all sit together we are going to spend at least one and a half hours together we are going to see how we can revolutionize and change the way grammar is being taught in the indian classroom and before we begin that let me tell you one thing very thing i come from a family of teachers you know my great grandfather was an english teacher my nani was an english teacher my mother my masi my bua my aunts any woman you ask in my family who are you they will end up saying that yes we are an english teacher so probably this comes naturally to us because it once happened at my place that my cousin she hurt her left foot so she went to my masi and told her mama my left feet is aching now my dear masi being such a hardcore teacher i had on top of that for english she is like what did you say she said mama i hurt my left feet She was like, "Bitte, it's left foot." And she was like, "Mama, enough! I've heard it. Whether it is feet or foot, it does not matter." So, my dear teachers, the first point that I'm trying to tell you is that it is not really important to always be a grammar Nazi or an authoritarian. I'm going to share a quick example from our households, and then fast forward it to the class to really make it loud and clear that what route would we be taking in today's session. so my dear teachers at home the child comes to you and says mama mamam and you get very excited what is your response to that so you say acha to mere bete ko pani chahiye main abhi apne bacche ke liye pani leke aati hu mera bachcha glass mein piyega ya katori mein piyega sipper se lega ya kaise lega chalo ab gadgad karke pani pi jao poor child at home he had just said mama mamam he did not go beyond any of saying any other word or adding any grammatical structure to it but over there you gave him 10 new words you gave him acha mere bete ko pani chahiye main abhi pani leke aati hu so that's 10 new words and two correct sentence structures that you have given him now fast forward it to the class my dear teachers the child in the classroom says ma'am i samriddhi what is the instant reaction of the teacher the teacher says beta it's not i samriddhi it is i am samriddhi so next time when i ask you what are you going to say i am samriddhi and poor child what happens then so that child feels that no matter whatever i have to say in this language i need to say it grammatically correct else ma'am will correct me and you know what happens when we correct that child the all the confidence because at home also the logic that the child had was mama 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 he did not say mama mama chahiye so he applied that logic similarly in the class the child said okay mai samriddhi so i samriddhi is the correct one and he started saying that to you however since we were in a formal teaching environment since we had a syllabus to complete since we saw 
English, not as a language, but as a subject, because I'm a subject teacher. Therefore, I went on to correct the child. So all the confidence that the child had in putting those two words together in English goes down. The second thing that happens, my dear teachers, is that there is a little bit or some of the children in the corner of the class who laugh when somebody uses incorrect English language. So then the child thinks, oh my God, next time when I speak in English, I must A, speak it correctly because either the man will correct me, B, there will be some kids who would laugh at me. Now what happens is this child would be hesitant in speaking and knowing about the grammar structures as he goes along. Because now in his mind is one thing, the correctness of the language and that is where the whole drama of the grammar comes in that is where the whole fear of this language comes in so instead of saying to the child hey, it's not i samriddhi i would rather tell child oh you are samriddhi so and i am let's say i am priya so i would say hi you are samriddhi i am priya so your name is samriddhi my name is Samriddhi. I am Samriddhi. So what are you going to say to me next time, my dear child? Children, my dear teachers, are very smart. You never taught the mother tongue to child at home. He picked it up through listening. So if you really want to teach grammar, if you really want to teach the real and the correct way of teaching and speaking a language, you must ensure that you do it in an indirect way. Children imbibe language structures, the correct grammar structures subconsciously. The more you use them, the more indirectly without pointing it out to them that they are wrong here and this should have been said in this fashion. Children learn better through it. And that is the whole idea that we are going to be working on today. So since we now begin in a complete orderly fashion, before we get into the nuances of grammar teaching and the language, let me tell you one thing, like since this is a webinar mode, so you participants will not be able to see each other. I can see your names coming in. I'm also able to see your names and the school names coming in in chat. So we're going to make this session very interactive. So you will be on a view and listen mode. However, to all the questions and the interactions that we would be having, I would encourage, I would recommend that you please send in your responses through chat because I always keep my chat box open and that is how we're going to make it a two-way interaction and not just a one-sided and a one-way road where I do all the talking and you people just listen to it. So since it is about a language, it is about this thing, so we have to do it this way. Now before we get into the real nuances, I have a small video to show to you. So let's quickly see this video and discuss what is that point that I'm trying to make. I've already reiterated it a couple of times in my last conversation with you. So let's make it more emphatic by looking at this video, which is related to the main idea that we are talking about. So here we go, my dear teachers. Okay, I'm so sorry. Let's go again. Okay. Better. Morning, ma. Ah. So, how is it? The girl is very nice. Very good. The girl is very nice. The girl is very nice. The girl is very nice. बस अब एक कप चाय मिल जाती तो आज का दिन बन जाता क्यों समझू के यहाँ पे चार कप चाय पी के तुम्हारा मन नहीं भरा रमेश काका दादा के लिए एक कप चाय लाना आजकल तो लोग इंटरनेट पर देखकर शादी कर लेते हैं हमारे लड़के ने लड़की और उसके परिवार से मिलवा तो दिया खैर कोई बात नहीं मार सब ठीक तो है ना नहीं अगर मन में कुछ है तो बोलो नहीं कुछ नहीं पर हमारे समय में तो शादी से पहले लेन देन की बात होती थी 
हाँ हुई ना लेनदेन की बात तो बात तय हुई गहने गाड़ी दस लाख रुपए नकद मुझे लगा कहीं और देना होगा तो देना उनकी हीरी जैसी बेटी ले रहे हैं इतना देना तो बनता है ना माँ <laughs> चलो ये भी अच्छा है teachers what is the point that i'm trying to make by showing you this video what point are we reiterating what is the underlying message in this video so please send in your responses through chat respect okay beautiful the mindset time has changed absolutely changing trends the world is really transforming absolutely change in the prevailing customers changing generation generation gap changing thinking we must change change of mindset absolutely our importance values okay wonderful so we are on the same page because there are a bundle of responses coming out in the chat which are reiterating the fact that change is beautiful and it is time we change the my dear teachers these generation that you are teaching right now we call them millennials they are the ones who are born in 2000 and beyond and these children do not understand the thing way things we understood it this generation works on two levels they work on purpose and they work on benefit if you want them to do something you first need to tell them why it needs to be done and then in addition to it you need to tell them the purpose of doing it so similarly when we talk about english language teaching when we talk about grammar teaching my dear teachers let's not teach the way we were taught how were we taught i would hear quote a very very famous poem by nisim izikil and that goes by miss pushpa goodbye party for miss pushpa ts okay so now in that poem Mr Nisim Izikil writes I'm going to read that to you and over there we're going to find out what exactly is the problem with the grammar teaching or the language teaching in the current scenario so it say begins like friends our dear sister is departing for foreign in 2 3 days and we are meeting today to wish her bon voyage You all are knowing, friends, what sweetness is in Miss Pushpa. I don't mean only external sweetness, but internal sweetness. Miss Pushpa is smiling and smiling, even for no reason, but simply because she is feeling. So I'm going to read out again, and you tell me which is the main basic grammar uh, problem that we're talking about here, friends. Adia's sister is departing for foreign in two three days, and we are meeting today with her to wish her bon voyage. You all are knowing, friends, what sweetness is in Miss Pushpa. I don't mean only external sweetness, but internal sweetness. Miss Pushpa is smiling and smiling, even for no reason, but simply because she is feeling. Okay, so let's see. All are knowing absolutely. That's right. So we have translation problem. We have tenses. We all are knowing. Will be departing tense. That's right. You know, when we speak English in India, ninety percent of the times the people who are learning to speak English language they use the continuous tense. How is the preparation going? Preparation travels. We do not know that. Okay. so here we use we call this as babu english like somebody has rightly said the broken english the babu english the indianism of english because we use a lot of continuous tense so my dear teachers whenever we are teaching children the english language remember not to tell them to translate the moment you translate you really really throw open all the challenges that could be catered to in this language so never never ever ask children to translate when the child starts to speak hindi at home punjabi at home okay kashmiri at home or any language of himachal pradesh at home okay they do not really 
have any other language to resort to. Similarly, when it comes to English language, we do not require any translation. Two days back, we had such a beautiful interaction with Sangeeta Ma'am, where again, we say that translation is not required even for kindergartners. So over here, we're dealing with class one to eight students because those are the teachers that we have in our audience today. So my dear teachers, let's talk about how can we introduce grammar structures by ensuring that we do not do translation and we do not teach the way we were taught. So my dear teacher, the first step in not teaching the way we were taught is using an inductive approach to grammar teaching. Now, what is it? I'm going to take the first and the foremost, the most simplest of the examples that we do. Since we all are talking and speaking about tenses in the chat box, let me pick up present tense. So here we are with class three and we are introducing simple present tense to the child. So we tell my dear children, today we're going to do simple present tense. And the child will be like, okay, fine, let's do it. And then you tell them, simple present tense is used when we talk about facts, likes, dislikes, okay? And when we talk about uh, universal truths, we talk about habits, we talk about things that we do on day-to-day -day basis. That's right. And the child is listening and listening and listening. Absolutely right. Now, what happens next? You give them the structure. You tell them it is subject plus first form of the verb plus object. And then we give them an example. For example, Ram goes to school. Rohan eats breakfast. We play in the garden. Right now we can't do that because of the coronavirus care. But yes, these are the examples that we give to students. And then we give them 10 practice sentences to practice. So what is happening, my dear teachers? While doing this, we are again teaching the way we were taught. We are only telling them that grammar is that 15 marker, fill in the blanks or complete the sentences or match the following or one word responses that comes in the exam. Because that is what we've told them. Rather, how would we be doing? I'm going to ask you simple questions and you tell me if your kids can answer that. Okay, so what time do you get up? Now we encourage children, the child would first say, ma'am, 7 a.m. So you ask him to put it in a complete sentence. I get up at 7 a.m. All right, then the next question, which is your favorite fruit? So which is your favorite fruit? That is the next question. The third question, how do you come to school? Fourth question, which is your favorite teacher or who is your favorite teacher? Right. So can your kids answer all these four questions, my dear teachers? So what time do you get up? Or which is your favorite fruit? How do you come to school? And who is your favorite teacher? Or what is your name in that sense? Yes. Okay. So we have these responses coming in that yes, children will be able to answer. Class three children will be able to answer all these questions. My dear teachers, all the responses that children give, pick them up, write them on the board and congratulate children. Wow, you guys already know what we are going to do today. And there comes the excitement in the child. Ma'am, what are we gonna do? What is that we already know? And then you tell them, we're going to talk about things that you like, things that you do in a routine, things that talk about your likes and dislikes, or your habits and the universal facts. So from their examples, you let them know that when and how a simple present tense is used. Then what happens? All the sentences that you have written, ask the child, what is a noun? What is the name of the person here? So circle that and write down subject. Ask them, what is the action that is happening? Circle that and write down the verb and then write down the object. So I like mangoes. So I is your subject, like is my verb and mangoes is my object. So from there, what you are doing, you are deriving the rule. You are inducing learning. Instead of giving the rule book or the structure in the beginning, you are taking responses from children. You are connecting to their lives and then asking them to discover rules. My dear teachers, 
students have been using the language ever since they entered school. This child, when he enters school, knows twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, what you are. He knows that, okay? He knows the rhyme. He knows multiple rhymes that are there. He can say, my father's name is this, my mother's name is this, I live here, I live there, and stuff like that. In school, you only need to make children conscious of grammar. You only need to make them discover the structures. If you go by teaching them the structures by telling them it is a new concept and it is very important, it will not happen. Okay, so like this way, if you teach them, the child will be able to know the importance of it in the real life. So the another point in inductive grammar teaching and the way grammar should be taught is that we must tell child how and where to use it. So ask him to now describe himself, describe the school, describe his home or talk about himself. Because you know what happens? You and I have also studied tenses during our school time. And so have your students. But ask them to write a paragraph on something. Ask them to speak about something. And then comes the famous problem. Ma'am, how should I begin? What should I write? What tense should I use? Why? Because the way we were teaching, we were only telling children the grammar concept that I've taught you is for that practice activities and the drilling that I do, I've given you for those 10 questions. No, my dear teachers, if you do not tell them how and where to use it in day-to-day -day life, the child will not be able to remember it for a lifetime and to make you remember that, to put that point across to you very, very clearly. I have again this one small video to show you, okay? So that we can uh, understand it better and I will give you a visual impetus to remember it, okay? So let's go and see this video. बेटा हमारे टाइम पे तुम्हारे स्मार्टफोन नहीं थे आपके टाइम पे पार्ले जी था Okay, so nowhere down the line am I promoting Parle J here, nor am I saying that children need to have smartphones with them. But my dear teachers, if you teach them the way we were taught, if you go by telling them the structures and the rules first and not taking responses from them by not initiating, by taking the information from the child, probably the child will never understand the importance of it. And secondly, if you do not contextualize, if you do not put it in his scenario and his life, the child does not know what is the importance of learning it. Remember the purpose and benefit. Okay, so the benefit you have to tell to the children, you have to have a connection with the things around. So when you talk about habits, likes, dislikes, facts and all, so please initiate a conversation in the class wherein the child gets to speak. Please, writing is the last four skill. It starts with LSRW. So let's not go with the drilling practice. Let's start with the speaking. Let's start with the listening. And that is the idea. The next strategy that is important for the grammar teaching or any language teaching that we have here is the 21st century skill. And that is KWHL. Whenever you're making your lesson plans for grammar teaching, my dear teachers, please start with K. K is you evaluate what do your children. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Somebody, uh, okay, yes, I'm audible. Somebody said that the video is mute. Okay, so the thing is, you always start <clears throat> with K, and that is no. So what do my children know? I'm going to write it in the 
chat box also so that everybody can have it once and for all k stands for no so i begin understanding what do my children already know so if i'm trying to do let's say subject and predicate with them or if i'm trying to do words with them so do my children already know about action words how do they know okay they know about walking they know about sleeping they know about eating all right so you activate previous knowledge we all know it in be it right we make pkt is the previous knowledge testing of it so now the 21st century skill has a different term for it so it is k know what your students already know build upon them next is w w stands for want what do i want my children to know so now over here when i'm talking about the tenses i want my children to know the structures of it i want my children to know how to use it in day to day life i want my children to be aware about the rules of it so that's what i want my children to know then comes h that is how so now what are the teaching strategies what are the teaching aids what kind of things would i be including in my teaching when it comes to teaching of that particular op sub uh, topic will i be showing them visuals will i be initiating a conversation will i be taking responses from them will i be playing a, a video or sorry music and then i'll be asking them to note down the action words that they hear or will i be just beginning with the book and asking them to read what has written what what is written there so how is the teaching aids the methods that i'm going to take the teaching tools that i'm going to incorporate okay it is important to mention it dear teachers because you know as english teachers we have a lot to cover and over here we're talking about a communicative approach to grammar teaching and that was the primary reason why main course book was included in the classes by the cbse and all the boards why because they wanted it to be a thematically linked to the chapter and followed in the communicative and the conversation way of dealing with it then comes l l stands for learn what will my children learn from it so what if these are not the learning outcomes from your side this is the benefit that the child will draw by contextualizing it with his real life because the learning becomes permanent when you connect it to the things around when you connect it to the things that the child can relate to so if i tell him that by using simple present you are able to describe yourself better you are able to ask for things in a proper manner then probably the child will know and understand okay this is how it needs to be done so those are the ways in which i go about doing it so i'm going to repeat it one more time it is k w h l where in k stands for know what your children already know okay write it down build upon their previous knowledge go by the spiraling fashion and that is what we call as progression and gradation my dear teachers gradation and progression is building upon something that children already know it is as simple as climbing stairs so when you climb stairs you do not jump to the third stair right you first step on the first stair then the second step then the third step and then you might take a leap to the fifth one and miss the fourth one however here when you're beginning you cannot miss the first step just like in the stairs so therefore build upon wow it goes right then w is want what do i want let's not go by what the syllabus wants what do you want your children to know from this particular concept innovate go by the real life changes that you want to see in them this is the concept that you are teaching then please write down the teaching aids you know many a times we make a lot of lesson plans learning objectives which are related to the chapter but over here let's do it in this fashion and lastly l stands for what will my children learn how am i going to connect it with their life okay so that's kwhl for you my dear teachers try to follow that and ensure that the children learn the third and the final point that is again linked to the two points that we have spoken about is link it thematically to the chapter grammar need not be taught in isolation grammar is the backbone of all subjects of the language okay so here i show you an image to remember so that you would ensure that you do not take up grammar in isolation so my dear teachers grammar is the backbone of a language 
And second point that I'm trying to draw, who can tell me that from this image? So what is the second point? Any thoughts that come to you by looking at this image? So how we can teach, okay. Very right, Piali ma'am. Wonderful, Suma ma'am, coming in there. That's right. Okay, backbone. We're taking integrated approach. We're talking about the scope of the topic. We're talking about, that's right, interlinking it across the curriculum, learning by playing. Okay, wonderful. That's right. So my dear teachers, you all are on the same page when we talk about that A, grammar is linked to life. Grammar should be taught in an interactive way. Grammar is the soul of the language. And yes, there is a multidisciplinary approach to grammar. Okay, you not only require an English book to teach grammar. My dear teachers, you can teach grammar by picking up any English language textbook that you have. So what I'm trying to say is do not restrict yourselves only to the chapters that you are teaching. It is important to thematically link the grammar concept whenever you are doing. And how do we do that? Let's say you want to teach them adjectives. Let's pick up a science book in that case. Let's talk about animals. Let's talk about the small sized animal. Let's talk about the large sized animals. So let's pick up those. Let's talk about rhinoceros. Let's talk about elephant and let child compare the ears. So a rhinoceros would have smaller ears as compared to an elephant. Let's talk about the, let's talk about giraffe and elephant in that case. So giraffe is tall and giraffe has a very slim neck. However, elephant is fat and huge. So you can pick up any picture, you can pick up any text, you can have a multidisciplinary approach to teaching grammar and B, always link it to the theme. Because when you link it to the theme, the learning thread is not broken. You add on to what the child is learning. And that way is the child can fall back on something that he knows, on a text that he's aware of to pick up examples. So next time, if you're looking for grammar questions, if you're looking for making grammar activities, don't go on the internet, pick up the textbooks that are there, pick up the things that are there with you in the school library or the books that the child is using in that particular grade for all those things. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to talk about is something very important and that is including activities. So the next one are 10 minutes that we are having with us. I'm going to share a lot of activities that you can use for teaching sentences, nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and all grammar concepts that we have. Now, before we begin doing that, let me talk to you uh, about one thing. So I hope you all have a pen and paper because my dear teachers, we are going to do some drawing. Okay, so because you know, whenever you begin your classes, whenever you start your classes, the first thing that is very important is this. So here is a picture that I'm going to show to you. And you tell me what are these? Which part of the meal is it? So if I'm serving you a three course meal after this workshop, which part of the meal, which part, which course is it? Yes, so let's see the responses that we are getting. Okay, so which course of the meal is it? Is it the first course? Yes, that's right. So we have a lot of responses, that's right. So it is starters, it's snacks. Okay, so now my dear lovely teachers, you go to a restaurant. And then in the restaurant, you order snacks. You order the first course, that is the starters. Now in that starters, it happens is the starters that came in, they were not that very great. They were bland, okay? And um, you really did not enjoy it. So now, would you start making up your mind for the main course? Would you intrigue yourself? Would you contemplate that, did I make the right decision of coming to this place? Because if the snacks are like this, I wonder how would the main course be? Right, so you all are saying, you know, I will not order the main course because my taste initially has been spoiled. My dear teachers, what is the starter in your class? How are we starting our grammar classes? Are we starting with an activity? 
or are we blindly jumping onto the main course and telling children all right good morning so let's do this today no so therefore think twice think thrice what is the starter in my class and the first starter that i'm going to give to you is the listening impetus so now we have our pens ready so let's do some drawing okay so my dear teachers i want you to draw a tree listen carefully okay so i want you to draw a tree next next to the tree draw three small plants next to the tree draw three small plants on each of these plants draw a flower each okay next draw three clouds okay now draw a sun draw a sun you can draw it anywhere slightly peeping out of the clouds or on a corner on a side it's okay with me and lastly draw a kite with its thread loosely hanging in the air so there's a kite in the sky with its thread loosely hanging in the air all right now my dear teachers once you've completed making this picture drawing this i want you to tick mark the things that are more than one in this picture so tick mark the things that are more than one in this picture all right so can you tell me can you send in your responses in chat which are the things that are more than one okay clouds plants okay flowers okay all right so you have clouds you have flowers and you have plants so these are the things that are more than one do you think your kids can do this let's talk about class 1 2 and 3 your kids can draw this much and can they tick mark the things which are more than one yes okay wonderful so my dear teachers the things that you just tick marked they are plural nouns so things which are more than one are plural nouns and things in this picture which are one or which are not many are singular nouns so now next time when i want to introduce the concept of singular and plural nouns i do not need a book i ask children to not to get them any book that day for the english class let's do it through listening let's do it through drawing cbse anyhow is asking us to integrate art so let's integrate it this way you can even do adjectives in the similar fashion ask children that we're going to draw an animal that is found in jungles of africa you know i once saw it on national geographic but now they say that it is extinct okay so now let's draw that animal and that animal's name is chinkumpu so any name any name that you can take So now draw a big circle. So this animal has a big round circular face. Then it has two conical ears. So it has two conical triangular ears. All right. Now it has square eyes. So it has two small square eyes. Then the next what about his nose? his nose is like a pig he has a snout so it is cylindrical and tiny and there are two dots at the beginning of his nose the nostrils then it has a cylindrical body and it has small tiny fat legs four legs small tiny rounded fat legs and then it has a big tail which is bushy in the beginning hairy in the beginning and slims down it becomes small and slims down in the end and that's it so all the words that we've just used are my dear teachers 
I don't know yes. that one. Our adjectives. Another way that we can do adjectives, we're talking about warm ups, we're talking about activity oriented classes. All my dear teachers, I want you to now write down one thing that you like about yourself the most. For example, if I had to introduce myself today, I would say, Hi, I'm smiling, Samriddhi. So, what is that that you feel is best in you? And prefix it before your name. So send in me your introduction by saying, hi, I am your best quality and then your name. Daring the party. Okay, that's wonderful. Smiling Mamta. Wonderful. Okay. Chetna Han says, curious Chetna, active Yashni, simple Rupinder, kind-hearted kind Kiran, sincere Shweta. Okay. Cerebral Piali, wonderful there. Smart Shweta, sensitive Richa, creative Malajinder, emotional Vandana, empathetic. Okay, so a lot of responses. My dear teachers, can your children talk about their best quality? Everybody likes to talk about themselves. Can your students do that? Yes, that's right. Okay, yes, so many yeses coming. Yes, absolutely. So next time when we open a class, let's not ask them the disheartening question. How many marks did you get in your last class? That gives a chill, that really runs a chill down my spine. Instead of that, ask them to describe themselves and then tell children, okay, so my lovely children, the words that you just use to talk about yourself are adjectives. So instead of telling them adjectives are describing words, my dear teachers, tell them, that words that you use to talk about yourself you talk about things you talk about other things describe okay give in detail about what they see what they hear are describing words and those are adjectives so simple activities there the point is the simpler you make the connection that you give to children the better okay so that is how you can start with adjectives. Let's quickly move to the junior classes where we are also giving them alphabets and letters. So first and foremost, dear teachers, please tell children that there are 26 letters and only one alphabet. Alphabet is a word mala. More often children say, my name starts with alphabet S. And then we're like, okay, all right, fine. Alphabet is a word mala and there will always be one alphabet in any language. In English, we have 26 letters. So now, how do we do teaching them alphabets and letters? They already know all of things. So the first is we do a riddle. We ask them a riddle. And that riddle is, my name begins with letter I. I am cool. I'm found in the freezer of your fridge. Who am I? So this riddle is, who am I? And over here, that's right, ice cream. Yeah, so we can also have ice, yeah. So ice, ice cream. The simple point is, you do not have to tell them that we're going to do alphabets and letters. Tell them we're going to play a riddle today and that letter is, who am I? You make tiny slips of papers and give it to students. If you're conducting online classes, you can privately send it to children on chat because their parents would be there to help and read out. And then you ask children to make three sentences. The first one should be as vague as I am cool. The second one should talk about a location. That is, I am found in the freezer of your fridge. And the third one could simply talk about the letter with which I begin, or it could add on to it that I'm mostly eaten when it is hot outside or you're feeling hot. So this way, the children will able to guess that what is that word that we are talking about. So you're improving their vocabulary for that particular letter, but not by making them memorize, but by picking out words that the children can already know about. The second one and second example on the same front that I'm going to give you is this. Let's find out if you all can think about what this is. I am man's best friend. <coughs> Excuse me. I am man's best friend. Second clue. I am mostly found on shelves. <laughs> I'm mostly found 
on shelves. See, that is why I hear your big pause because there are a lot of responses coming in for dog. But then I said, I'm mostly found on shelves. Okay. You can read me anywhere that you like. And the answer is yes, books. So books are also man's best friend. If it was dog, I would say, and you know, many of your children would do that because my kids, the class three kids, mostly would jump to dog in the beginning. But then I had to twist it around and add a shelf because you had to introduce a different word or a letter to them. So go about playing this game with your children. Age is no bar. It is just that you can complicate the riddle for the senior grades and for the primary as you deem it right. The next one is, is like playing an atlas. So an atlas is you begin a word game. So let's say I say chicken and then it ends in N. So now the child will have to start a word with N. Okay. So that way is the children will do it in a team wise fashion because it's a game. So let's make it competitive. Let us make it row wise. So row one gives the first word. Row two says the second word beginning with the last letter of the previous word. Row three goes on with the next word and so on and so forth. Another way that you can do is it is spot a word. Spot a word is a very simple activity which you can include for which you need any textbook. So pick up any book that we have. All right. And ask children to play book cricket. So the child from the first row opens the book. He spots the word. Okay, this is the word. And he tells them page number. Now, rest of the class starts finding out where that word is. Whosoever finds out that word first gets to give the second word. So you can play it through book, you can play it through word wall. A word wall is a mandate in all your English classes, my dear teachers, and it should be next to the blackboard. All right, so it should be next to the blackboard. Put all the new words that children learn, be it in science, be it in social, be it in mathematics, be it in any subject and English primarily. Put that there and play these word games with children during the substitute periods, during the introduction and stuff like that. Okay, so now the other one that you can do for, uh, let's say the alphabets and letters is your partner says the letter which comes before and after it. Let's say my, we have to complicate it. So it's a ice cream. It ends with an M. So now the child will not say the word with M. He has to say a word with N. Okay, and L. So one word, one letter before and after that word, because otherwise at times it gets too simple. Everybody is able to spot the last letter, but let's do it interestingly by the previous and the second one. Okay. Now the next activity that we are going to do and talk about my dear teachers is sentences. You know, we do subject predicate, wherein you tell children that this is the subject and this is the predicate and we go about teaching them the whole gamut of information on it. I have something different for you when it comes to subject and predicate. You know, children know rhymes. So what I do is I always make these papers. I always make these envelopes wherein I put these things. So I make slips of the rhymes. So Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. And then you have Baba Black Sheep. Have you any wool? Jack and Jill went up the hill. So the subject jack and jill you write it with a blue color or and then you write went up the hill with another color and you make these cards pick up as many rhymes as you can which children are aware of shuffle these okay give one slip each to the child and then ask children to form pairs ask them to go running around the class. This is creative chaos. Okay. So you ask them to go running around in the class and find that pair. Had we been doing this in first study, we would have had more fun because I would have given you these pages and then whichever pair finds out the subject and predicate because children do not know this is subject and predicate. They find their matching pair. They come and jump and sing that right. So now over here, children are enjoying Children are learning the concept by discovering for themselves. Okay, so make use of these cards. Get them from the stationery today because I'm going to tell you a lot of activities involving these. So here I have Baba Black Sheep. 
Humpty Dumpty, and then I have uh, this one, which is the other one that I have. Yes, Jack and Jill. So Jack and Jill went up the hill. Once they have done that, you ask all the blue colored children, the children having blue colored slips to go on one side, and you ask the children with the other colored slips to go on the other side. And then you ask them that what do these people need, these four? What is Jack and Jill doing? What did Humpty Dumpty do? And who out of these things are doing that? So now you tell them this is the subject, one who does this action. And this one talks about the action that has been done. And that, my dear teachers, is an introduction to subject and predicate. Okay? Wonderful then. So as easy as it gets, it can be. Okay? Now, the next one. Let's talk more on the sentences front. So when we do sentences, my dear teachers, you already be doing, uh, let's say, story making. So you've been doing story making where children add one sentence and so on and so forth. So before introducing any other concept, let's do it through the story making, wherein children will make a new sentence picking on the last word of the previous sentence, okay? So either they add a sentence or they pick up the last word of the previous sentence and then make a sentence. For example, here is an, uh, the first one. Once there was a fairy, she lived in a palace. The palace was in the hills of Uttarakhand. Okay, something like this. The palace was very beautiful and stuff like that. So this is sentence chaining. This is building the story. Now you want to complicate it. You want to add an element of fun. You pick up the last response. There was a fairy. The next I would say fairy was beautiful. Okay, then the next the last word is beautiful beautiful flowers were seen in the garden or beautiful if the child cannot you start the sentence with beautiful you can give them a hands up and say okay there were beautiful flowers in the garden garden outside the palace was huge okay so or yes very nice so the garden had treasure garden had treasure you're saying okay wonderful very nice so that's all that we have to do so you build on those things and that is where you are not even telling children that what you're doing now you tell them that sentences or the complete sentence which conveys a meaning is called a sentence a group of words which convey a meaning is actually these things okay now my dear teachers let's move quickly to the uh, other kind of sentences that you have. So now when you have to introduce the types of sentences, my dear teachers, uh, I will be going in progression. So we're doing with sentences first. We're going to move to verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and then ten with verbs we do, we'll be doing tenses also. So since there was a request in there, so I'm just ensuring that I put that point across to you. Okay, the next one is types of sentences. Now, types of sentences, you do not again have to tell them that this is interrogative or that part. You ask child, give them a situation and ask them to frame uh, sentences according to that. For example, you go to home, you go back home after school, what will you say to your mother? The child will say, Mama, I am back from the school. Ask the next sentence, what is in for lunch? Okay, wow. That's my favorite food. Thank you, mom. I really enjoyed having it. Now, these four kind of sentences, or the mother says, please go and wash your, wash your hands first. Okay? So now, these are the things that we are going to do. So you pick up instances, you pick up sentences, you pick up situations where the child can relate to and do. And that way, you will be able to get that point across to children. Now here you ask them, when you use a group of words to talk about, to describe or to declare something or ex share your information, okay, those are the first kind of sentences. If you are asking a question to your mother, over there you're using interrogative sentences. The next one, if you 
share an opinion and you're excited and you use these exclamations. Wow, those are the exclamatory kind of sentences, okay? And then lastly, if somebody gives you any instruction, you talk about the imperative or the instructional sentences that are there. That's right. How was your day, mom? Very right, Supreme, ma'am. Okay. So similarly, you go to the principal's office. What are you going to say to ma'am? And then take the responses from the children, write them on the board, and then you are doing it. See, what are we doing, teachers? We are picking real life context so that the child becomes aware that whatever I'm learning in grammar, it is useful in life. Otherwise, you ask them to practice grammar and they don't do it. Okay, simply. Or, so therefore, the idea here is the connection that we have to build. The next is, when you are practicing the types of sentences with them. Now, children do not have to write it down. Again, no books required. If the sentence is an interrogative sentence, like we're giving them actions. If it's a declarative sentence, okay, the children will stand up. If it is an interrogative sentence, children will clap. If it is an imperative sentence, children will touch their knees. And if it is an exclamatory sentence, children will laugh out loud. So you've already told them the types now, and now you want to practice it, okay? Now, thing is, how would you do this? Simply, let's read out a couple of sentences and see if we can do it. So now if I ask you, I'll take responses from uh, that have come up in the chat. So the child goes home and he says, wow, mom, you look awesome. So what are we gonna do? We're going to laugh out loud. Now, the next question that the child asks is, mom, how was your day? So. It is an interrogative sentence. So we clap. Then the child says, I had a wonderful time in school today. What are you going to do then? I had a wonderful time in school today. So stand up for declarative, clap for interrogative, touch your knees for imperative, laugh out loud for exclamatory. That's right. So you will stand up. Very good. Similarly, dear teachers, you can do it in your online classes also that you were doing. Just as you've been sending me responses there, you can see your children. So instead of stand up, you can ask them to raise their arms, put them down and go about doing stuff. Fine. So now quickly moving on to nouns, because there's a request coming in that how can we do nouns more easily? The first and the foremost quality to do nouns right now, then under the lockdown is ask your children to go to the kitchen and know down the things that they see. Ask them to go to the balcony, living room, bedroom, and the washroom. And ask them to note down 10 things that they see there. Children can do that easily, right? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so now the idea here is the things that children are noting down. So if the child write down, what are the things that we see in kitchen? Give me five things that you see in kitchen. Quickly then, <laughs> five things that you see in kitchen. Okay. Fine. So we have stove. All right. We have utensils. Okay. We have fridge. Wonderful. We have ladle, rolling pin. Okay. Pan, griddle, shelf. Nice. Very good. The child can write that. Absolutely he can. Now ask them, don't you think these are the things? that you see, and these are nouns. So my dear teachers, the name place animal thing that we used to play in the old, age old fashion of the games that we played in school during the free time is your nouns. That is how you introduce the nouns to the children. The next thing that you do with the nouns is you make slips and you ask children to make a story. So make four jars. The first will be the name, the second one would be a place, the third would be an animal, and the fourth one would have a thing. Ask children, make, uh, put them in groups of six, and ask them that each child from one group will come and take, up, take out one slip from each of these four jars. As he does that, he would now take it back to the group and they will have to build a story using all these four things. So now this is that the children are creating a story keeping nouns at the center. 
So again, nouns are the beginning of the grammar concept that we are talking about. So that's for the nouns that you can see. You can include different varieties and different things as you go along by introducing a ball in the class. So you throw a ball to the child and ask him to give you an abstract noun for that particular thing. Then moving on to a proper noun with a particular letter and going along. So those are the things that are there. Taking, picking up from that kitchen, bedroom, living room and the balcony activity. Children first, you wrote down the things that you see. Now I want you to note down the actions that happen in these rooms. So what do you do in kitchen? What do you do in kitchen? Tell give me three things that happen in kitchen. Okay. Fine, so there's cooking. All right, very nice. So they are saying cooking, cleaning, chopping. All right, very good. So now your kids can also do that. So that my dear, anything that describes what is happening, the action are verbs. So instead of telling children that verbs are action words, first pick up the things that happen, washing dishes, grating, absolutely. So pick up the things that they can relate to. Pick up in classroom, ask them to spot or talk about 10 things in this classroom. Make groups, first group write down the things and the actions that they do in a classroom. The next group talks about the corridor. The next group talks about the playground. The other group talks about the music room. Then the uh, orchestra room, the painting room, the photography room, different rooms in the school. Use the environment that is around and then build upon it. So that is what the thing is. Then take it beyond. Take it as railway station, bus station, airport, street. Build upon it. Why? Because that is where you tell them that to describe anything that happens here. To talk about anything that happens here, the children are using nouns and verbs and that is where they talk about learning it. The other simplest activity that you must be doing in your classroom is dumb charades. So again, if you're introducing it to class one, two and three, pick up slips. <coughs> Excuse me. So now what am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, that's right, I'm eating. Can your children do that? All right, next, what am I doing? That's right. Okay, yes, I'm dancing. So now children will have fun doing these. Okay, ma'am, I will definitely tell you the activities on models also. Let's finish this thing first. So yes, so that's dancing. So now you tell children that the actions that you are doing, your friend did, are at verbs. Now the child will be saying dancing. Now you tell him the root word, dance. So he dances. Then you talk about they dance. We danced yesterday. We will dance in the evening or I am dancing. So use this opportunity not only to introduce verbs, but to introduce different kind of tenses as well. To do a revision of tenses. Whichever group spots what the child is doing, picks up a word, picks up a slip, and over there if it is written present tense, simple present, the children will use simple present rules to articulate, to make a sentence. Then if the other group has gets the word as simple past, he will make the, that group will make it in simple past using the action that the child has done. So any small activity can be built up as we go along. The next thing that we do about doing uh, this thing is spotting an object. So whatever they see in class, firstly ask children to spot a bottle. So what is this? You spotted a bottle. Now tell me various actions that you can do with this bottle. So what can we do with this bottle? How can we use this bottle? Can this bottle be used for drinking water? Can this bottle be used for uh, holding uh, hot liquids? Can this bottle be used for uh, planting planters when I lose the cap of it? Can I use this bottle to store some grains, right? Then what else can I use this for? 
Any other responses? What other can be the uses of this bottle? What are the other actions that can be involved? Hey, playing catch catch. Okay, wonderful. So we can play catch catch with that. Okay, storing. That's right. Opening. Okay, very nice. Opening the lid, pouring water. Yes. So you see, number of actions and verbs are coming up. But what are you doing? I am not doing the talking, my dear teachers. You are sending responses through your ideas. Similarly, kids are very smart, and they will come up with these ideas in a jiffy. So let them come. Let them do all these things. Now we come to the verb forms. How do we do verb forms? Please do not make them memorize the verb forms. Again, use these slips. Use these slips. Okay, I have written multiple. Work forms in here. So here, the first one that I'm showing you is see, saw, and seen. So this is what I have here. I have nearly fifty of these. So fifty into three becomes one fifty. So now I need to use how many students do I have? I taught a class of fifty-five students. So therefore, I created these many numbers. I give one slip slip each to a child. and i ask them to find their group find their matching cards now let the children go around and look for it you are not telling them the verb forms here okay now what happens is the child will go and see okay you are c i your name also begins with s and you are saw and seen okay probably we go together fine so they come up and say ma'am we are through and they are not in order the child have the children are standing like see seen and saw okay so they are not standing in order i do not tell them that this is wrong i ask the child who is standing second to take the middle space and then doing that i correct them and very indirectly i told them beta now this is the right order this is the first form this is the second and this is the third so that is how we go about doing it rather than making them memorize rather than making them learn all these things i do it through a game why because i want them to find a pattern i want them to discover from themselves i want them to collect according to the similarities that they can find and yes they might do it wrong in the first place but nonetheless this activity my dear teachers with 50 students takes not more than 10 minutes honestly speaking i've done it in the class and that is why i say so try it out the first time you do it might take up 15 minutes but what fun when you discover on your own that is when the real beauty of it comes now the next thing never ask them to learn and memorize these orders also make them discover i'm quickly going to share a slide with you where we have written all these things which the children can learn and see for themselves so here we go okay so now hurry hurry study study try try it now over here i ask children to find the commonality i want them to look for the similarity what is happening can the children find the common can they say that ma'am yes why yes absolutely okay so you all are agreeing to it wonderful then i show them the next one so the next one here is hope smile dance confuse so over again they are finding the commoners and then lastly we come to the double letter words so we say stop plan and rub so my dear teachers let them discover on their own just throw in some 10 words on this board with the common and the similar spellings and the change of verbs and ask them to find out how it is happening okay there is always a rule a logic for it and then once they have found it you give them a tip and trick because english is a second language for them we need to give them a tip and trick so now you tell them that my dear children if a word ends in a consonant then the y changes to i before the ending just like you did so you framing it you paraphrasing it for them in better and english so that they can write it down easily in their things then if the verb ends in e we simply add a d 
So now if it ends in vowel E, I add B. And lastly, when a word ends with vowel plus consonant, then the last letter, that is the consonant, after the vowel is doubled. So give them this tip and trick. Give them the logic behind it. Rather than memorizing those hundred word forms that we did using all the grammar books that our mothers had at home. Okay, so do not do it that way. Try to do it this one. Then talk about the irregular verbs. Now, this is basically for classes five and six and seven when you're doing that. So when we talk about simple past, you add then the irregular verbs. Talk about these irregulars, give them a little bit of idea about it so that children can lay the foundation of it as they go along. So rather than memorizing, here we are working on logic because grammar is the backbone. It is about the tips and tricks and the logics that you share with the children. The next thing that we're going to talk about, my dear teachers, is adverbs. Now, just like you have these slips, we next come to the adverb slips. Okay, now adverb slips, you need your verbs and you need the how. So don't introduce it right away that these are adverbs. Again, write down the verb with one color and write down your adverb with another color. Pick two students from each uh, row. First one will come and take a slip from the first file and that's the other child will come and take the slip from the other uh, other pile and okay okay i'll just show it to you okay so this is the adverb in pink color and then you can write down any verb with blue color so these are the two which go together so verb with one color and adverb with another color make two piles one child will come and enact the verb and the other child will come and will help the other child do it in a particular fashion in a particular way okay so that way is my dear children my dear teachers children would now be enacting something in a particular way and the question that you ask is how is the child walking how is the child sitting how is the child dancing how is the child eating and the answer to these responses will be adverbs so the how questions always always tell you about the adverbs so do not tell them that adverbs are this or these break the word again a tip and trick break the word add verb so words that are added to the verb which tell us more about the verb are called add verb okay so how many action is done is add verb fine so break the words like i'm saying break the concepts and then give it to children that what is that adverb that we were talking about they can they should be able to dissect and able to understand so again this is inducing learning you're making them do the talking you're not doing anything you're just doing all the hard work during the lockdown to make these slips and make these activities okay another activity using these lame sips that you can do is again give one slip each to the child and then ask them to form their pairs so this is an introduction after that to do it as a recap activity to do it as a recall activity i suggest you ask them to now find their pairs once they find their pairs the children will come to the center of the class and walk together and speak together climb together dance together in the way that it has been written and described here okay so this is what you do for your adverbs that we go along doing it more activity for the adverb is telling them that they are the kings of the school they are the king they have a kingdom here okay so either an imaginary kingdom and either 
they are the head boy or the head girl or they are the prefects of the school ask them to make the rules for their kingdom to make the rules for the school to make the rules for their class now how do they do that everybody must come to school on time all right you must walk quietly in the corridors you must eat your food slowly you must wash your hands nicely all right so these are the things that you have to do simple thing is pick up situation see i'm reiterating it again take the examples take the things that they would enjoy doing it so give probably so rules of the ground to one group rules of the class to the other child rules of the principal corridor to the other child rules of the washroom to the other child rules of the um, what do you call a gym class for the other child theater class to the other child let them let them real life incident incidents right so those are the things that you can do for your adverbs that you go there the next thing that you can also do is asking them to make how questions from the chapter so dear teachers we have this very interesting stories in our english textbook so why not <clears throat> tell children to gossip to tell them the who's and the why's and the hows of the world do that in pair we call it tps that is think pair and share so let children think together let children give one paragraph each or two paragraphs to one group of children and ask them to make four how questions from that and then the other groups will answer those questions as a teacher you can do a beginning and say let's say we talk about um, a chapter that i'm reading right now that is the north wind it is from class 3 so how did the north wind speak to the boy so she the north wind speaks very gently to the boy in the chapter so how did it speak gently and how did the boy speak to the north wind the boy had spoken angrily to the north wind because he was upset over what north wind had done so the how questions you're not only enabling them to recap the chapter but you're also linking the grammar concept to the chapter so whenever you have a substitute period whenever you have free time you can always use any text to ask children to make a uh, this kind of a thing okay so now my dear teachers coming on to the next one that is pronouns because yes we will have to do pronouns before adverbs now what are pronouns so how do we do pronouns basic thing i am samriddhi or my name is samriddhi i live in delhi delhi is a beautiful place it is the capital of india and stuff like that again ask children to describe ask them to describe their mother ask them to describe their teacher ask them to talk about any family member that they have now what do they do so now the child says i like my mother she is very kind so my dear teacher the child is already using she he doesn't say my mother is very nice my mother is very kind and my mother my mother my mother no the simple is the child is already using it again take the responses and tell them when you want to avoid the repetition when you want to talk about the person a thing or an object which had already been mentioned you use a word which replaces the noun so a word which replaces the noun like many of you have written is pronoun now let's break it up pro noun okay so pro noun so word which is for the noun which works to ease out the function of the noun which eases out the stress of using the noun time and again so pro somebody who is for that is a pronoun okay so pronoun is something that tells us or which we use in place of noun so either go for telling them the replace of it or i say which is a friend which is a party of a noun p for party p for pronoun which helps us in not repeating the noun time and again so break that word and give it to children now how do you do like we say 
we've asked them to describe their family we've asked them to describe people the next thing that you do is get a ball in class okay a simple ball a soft ball can do now with that ball my dear teachers our students sit tight in their seats it has to be a soft ball i will throw that ball to a child and i will ask him to say a sentence with a for a uh, about a king so the child will say there was a king we're doing a story building but we're doing it by using pronouns that child will now throw the ball to the other child now that child will have to add on talking about that particular king that he has spoken about so now would the child say the king was kind okay so if the second child says the king was kind it's okay now you move it to the third child he lived in a palace so he has to now use the another additional sentence but not using the word king so he then he moves to the another one he had a beautiful daughter then the other he also had a very beautiful son they lived happily in the kingdom my dear teachers when you do it through story building when you do it by getting a ball in the class a there is excitement b children are caught out of nowhere you do not know who is going to come in next the child does not know who so everybody has to be alert rather than nudging each other and checking for answers turning the leaves of the page of uh, book and checking for answers or sitting like this and staring at that no pick up simple stories and then ask the children to do it all right yes there is another very interesting a uh, uh, suggestion that has come up you are absolutely right ma'am she's also saying similarly like we did the adverb activity from the chapter so we can talk about the pronouns he she it they and many more by putting them in the chapter context so like you have your reference to context who said these words or who is he in those lines so let's start it early let's start it from class 3 itself let's start it from class 2 because children are smart they are gadget free they are knowing all these things it is just that when you do it in a video game pattern with them when you do it in a gaming pattern for them you would be able to use these things okay all right so yes mam is saying that what i feel is mostly children would use the nouns the king instead of pronouns since they are trained to make sentences or answering one line questions absolutely that is what i'm saying that this is a recap activity so when you do story making when you are doing sentence training you are giving them great examples in the popular story tales or the fairy tales so pick up the stories let's pick up humpty dumpty let's pick up um, snow white and the seven dwarfs let's pick up peppa pig let's pick up the cartoons that they know because when you are asking them to talk in class my dear teachers one thing that you have to realize that a children struggle with content b they struggle with language structures so let's cater to content first let's pick up things that they already know of so that the hesitation goes away okay and then you come back to the structures of it because you build in structures and the more practice you do in speaking and listening than writing children understand and imbibe it better so that is the whole idea that we are trying to do it here then there are more things that you can do on pronouns you can make a grid you can ask them you can do a tic tac toe tic tac toe it's your zero kata that we play so i read out a sentence and i ask children that here are two teams so if you give the correct answer you get a choice to put your cross in either of these nine boxes then i put the sentence out to the other other group and if they get it right they get to put the zero or the chance moves on to the second one so now again it is a gaming gratification that we are putting in doing with children so when you do it with tic tac toe zero kata you do it as a word relay there is competition and this competition is a simple energizer that we have to do better than him because you know teachers <clears throat> when it comes to 21st century teaching we need to teach them team building we need not tell them about individuality more because when you come to the corporate world when you come into your professions when you come into working together you're not an individual teacher 
there are six teachers who are teaching a particular class. So therefore, we need to share our ideas with each other and we need to start it early in the classroom itself. So let children help each other out. Let children work in groups and come together rather than having that notebook and hiding your answers and writing. No, let's do it openly. Let everybody learn from each other's mistakes and stuff like that. Okay, now the next part. My dear teachers, I'm quickly coming to prepositions because I need to cover your models and uh, conjunctions and a little bit on recorded speech and passive voice also and clauses as somebody is saying. Yes, uh, ma'am, we will start with active passive in just 10 minutes before we finish. Uh, let us finish these first for the primary sections. Okay, now prepositions. Okay, now prepositions, my dear teachers, how can you initiate this discussion with prepositions. I give you a simple, simple activity there. I call it in the pond or on the deck at the shore. So in the pond, on the deck, at the shore. All right. So now, what is that activity? Imagine, put children in one queue. A single queue. You can pick up 10 students at one go and tell them that what they are doing, where they are standing currently, are or is the pond. So they're currently in the pond. On their right hand side is the deck, is the deck of the ship. And on the left hand side is the shore. Okay. Now we play. Say, you all must be going say, Simon says and all these play activities. So you tell them, that when I say in the pond, you all will jump in the center. When I say on the deck, you will take a step towards your right. And when I say at the shore, you all will take a step towards your left. Right. So let's do it like this. So in the pond, we all stay here. Wherever you're sitting, just do it with me. When I say in the pond, your hands should be here. When I say uh, on the deck, you go towards the right. When I say on the shore, you go towards your left. Okay, so let's do it together. <clears throat> Three, two, one. In the pond, on the deck, at the shore, in the pond, in the pond, on the deck, on the deck, in the pond, on the deck, in the pond, on the deck, in the pond, on the deck, on the pond. Now, this is something there. I said on the pond. So now if your hand came back to the center, my dear teachers, we did it wrong because the instruction was in the pond. You cannot be floating on the pond until or unless I asked you so. So you had to be in the pond. Now you tell children. Children, the words that we used to shift places, to change positions are prepositions. So where are you right now? Ma'am, we are in the pond. Where were you when you were on the right? Ma'am, we were at the deck. So we were on the uh, we were on the deck. Where were you on the left? Ma'am, we were at the shore. So my dear children, which words are telling me where you are? In, at, on. And the words which tell us about the position reiterated are preposition so position okay so rehata dijiye positions pe focus kijiye and that is how you begin with the prepositions in the class you can even use imagery let's say either currently if you're doing an online class you can show them pictures so the pictures can be something like this let me just quickly show you some pictures which you can use or you can ask children when you are in an actual classroom that there was a, there is a cat in our class. Who's going to tell me where is that cat? Okay. Or you rearrange a couple of things on your table. And then you ask children to talk about those things. Okay. So here is this one. So look at the kittens. Where are they? Talk about in the class. So use words that you can share with them. So right now, since you're doing online classes, I would suggest to pick up as many pictures as you can 
and then try to do all these interesting activities with your children. Because once you're in a physical classroom, you'll be able to do it by getting real objects in the class. However, here, you can simply do it by showing them pictures. All right, so moving ahead, like I was saying, that's right, where's your book? So what I do is I mostly used to rearrange my table and I would ask my children to close their eyes for 10 seconds. And then let's say the pen and everything, I would just keep it under the papers or something. And then I would tell, I become misforgetful. And I say, my dear children, where is my pen? So now, where is my pen? The child, one child will say, ma'am, it is on the table. Okay, I can't see where it is on the table. Ma'am, it is next to your books. Okay, uh, can you be more specific? Ma'am, it is under your mobile phone. Okay, all right. Then where is my mobile phone? Ma'am, it is besides the books that you kept. Okay, fine. Then what else? Ma'am, where is, what? more can we say where is my pen ma'am it is also on the other side of the scarf or the duster that is kept fine so those are the things that you can use that show i'm going to share the screen one more time with you as the requests are coming in okay so here is the picture this is the picture you can pick up any picture so this picture i've taken it from one of our books only that is the grammar books that we have so you can pick up any picture. You can refer to our portal that is onlinecontents.rsgr.in. Pick up any picture from the chapter that you are doing and ask children to describe or tell you questions about uh, that thing. Okay. Okay. Next is this one. Okay. So moving ahead. All right. So that could be about prepositions. The next activity that you do is hide and seek. If you really want to have more fun, get a child in the class and ask him to change positions. So we do, everybody closes their eyes for 10 seconds. The child hides somewhere. So now we ask, where is Rohan? Ma'am, Rohan is behind the door. Okay, you caught him right. The next one, close your eyes again. Where is Ra? Uh, where is he now? Ma'am, he is at the last bench. Next, close your eyes again. So it's not like these. So those are ways in which a preposition can be done. And then you can rearrange and do things. The next way is, please ensure that you tell them the differences between the in, on, and at through a diagram. I'll share the diagram in the last 10 minutes when we are doing, but to now, right now I'm quickly moving on to conjunctions. So my dear teachers, conjunctions. Okay, C for conjunctions, C for connection. So words that connect to sentences are conjunctions. Tell children to write about the things in the things. Okay, um, one important thing because somebody just wrote jumping into the pool. Fine, dear teachers, let me tell you this from personal experience. I was teaching class four and believe you me, that child gave me the ride for my life. He asked me the difference between below and under. I explained it to him merely using 10 to 15 examples. The child said, no, I do not understand. Tell me the difference clearly. I was like, fine, I'll tell you the difference clearly. And I very well asked the child that, give me a day's time. I'll come back to you tomorrow and I'll do that. So whenever you have confusables in prepositions, please do not resort to Hindi. Use, again, simple words and the real life examples again. So below and under. Below is anywhere. Below or in a particular point. So the standard example that I now use and even class three, four, five and six, seven and eight, everybody, like even class 11th that I was teaching could now understand the difference between. Them. Below is anywhere between two particular points. For example, I was hurt below the knee so that means this is the knee so below the knee that means anywhere maybe on the ankle maybe on my calf muscles anywhere however if i say i was hurt under the knee that means perpendicular 
so under is always perpendicular fine below between any two points or starting from that point of reference to anywhere so use this below the knee and under the knee example as it cannot get any simpler across and along so across there is a hint in the word you go cross so i went across the street i went along along so when you go parallel so along is parallel then across is diagonal or you cross it you go in a diagonal fashion the next one is in in and into all those twos that you have in and into on and on to okay unto all right all these twos that you have how do you do that there's a lot of difference that children needs to understand whenever a two is involved my dear teachers there's always a thing in motion so there is water in the bottle i open the bottle and i pour the water into the glass so there is a transition there is a motion that is happening i walk into the glass so literally walk into the glass from outside to inside change of place and then i am walking in the glass there is no change of place the cat pounced upon the mouse so we're talking about the transition upon the mouse the cat is on the mouse that means she is not on the mouse so that is the thing so use these real life connections to tell them the differences okay beside and besides okay all these things that you go about doing besides that he came and sat beside me agar ek extra s hai so that means that is in addition to now similarly in tenses i'm sorry i'm uh, taking a break here for tenses one more time bachche are not able to understand that why does i behaves differently so now you tell them the singular and plural verb function through this thing tell them when your subject is singular it needs company and to give him company we add an s or es to the verb okay so when your subject is singular it is single he gets bored so he needs company so we add s n e s we make it a plural now if your this thing is plural the subject is plural therefore he doesn't need company he already is more than one he already has company so therefore we do not add s or e s to the verb now what happens with i ma'am i what why do we use the plural uh, kind of a sentence with like a verb with it why don't we ask s or es i is also singular tell them you my dear child are a one man army okay you are capable of doing a lot of things you are accomplished you are competent so you are a one man army and that is why i behaves or i does not require any s or es okay so those are the things that see simple tips and tricks make it on your own there is no rule book for it i created them as i taught along because that is one thing that children remember it okay so those are the things that you going to share with children and those okay so now the thing is conjunctions connectors like we talked about so now when we are doing conjunctions when we are doing connectors my dear teachers again we need to give lot of hints to children and to do conjunctions and connectors there you have to ensure that you give them different types of sentences again talk about likes and dislikes i like mangoes i don't like bananas can you put them together yes okay so i like mangoes and i don't like my bananas so you use and so whenever you want to join these sentences see for conjunctions the most things again you have to do is take real life example talk about things that happened today ma'am walked into the class ma'am said you must take out your notebooks okay so all these things but okay let's talk about yes so but you were saying so how do you do with but the simple thing is okay am i audible now 
because I'm getting a little bit of responses which says I'm not audible. Okay, fine. So could be to all those who are not able to hear, I would just request you to check the internet bandwidth because currently mine is a very stable connection. So I, that is one of the glitches that we have for the online trainings. Okay. So mom walked into the room. Sorry, yeah. So I like mangoes, but I don't like bananas. I like mangoes and apples. Please pick up healthy eating habits or anything related to values when you are trying to teach these conjunctions and grammar portions. Okay. The next thing that again that you do is what I do. Once I'm through with conjunctions, teaching him the basics of it, okay, by starting with sentences that they know and asking them to do it, I make these large size sheet papers, okay. So it has but written in it, then it has and, then I can use more of these uh, papers. So you can have five to six of these papers with you. So there is so, sorry, is it visible now? Yeah, it is so, and then there is because. Fine. So now you place these papers at different corners of the class. And then you make teams again. You ask children that I'm going to read out 10 sentences. When you feel that you know the answers, one child from each group will briskly walk and stand under that particular uh, piece of paper where that word is written. For example, we couldn't go out dash it was raining. So we couldn't go out as it was raining. Then the another sentence that you could do is, we all enjoyed a lot that we were seeing a movie or we were watching a movie because very right. So, okay, let's take another sentence. The dog cross the street with care dash it was a busy road the dog crossed the street with care dash it was the busy road that's right so you were saying as or because so simple thing is no books required either do it through listening or do it through gaming because when you activate the listening and the visual for the children they tend to enjoy it more so that's just one couple of activities for this thing. Quickly coming to models. My dear teachers, when we talk about models, I think the simple thing is the main chart that we give to children. And I have a problem with the chart that we share with the children. We share a chart wherein we tell them that can is used when we talk about ability, when we talk about request, when we talk about permission and stuff like that. No. Just one rule for models, okay? Categorize them according to the usage. So which all models will be used when we talk about permission? Which all can be used when we talk about request? Which all can be used when we talk about responsibility? When we talk about doing something uh, which we uh, ownership, that you ought to do this. We put an ownership on that person. So you need to reinvent the chart that you are making. So like I have a chart here. So I always make these sheets of paper, which I get laminated for all the difficult concepts that we have. So let's say for possibility, what do I use? I do not write might is used for possibility, which is less than may. I write down for possibility, we use may, must, sorry, we use may, must and might. Then. For ability, which all models can I be using to express the right thing to do in situation? I use ought. Okay, then for what are the things that I would be using permission? For permission, what do I use? So for permission, I use may. For permission, I use can. All right. So categorize it according to the usage, not according to the kind of model that you have. 
That's right. So you are uh, showing in your responses there. Okay. So the teachers, uh, yeah, I'll just show it to you again. So these are the cards which I create. All right. So change the structure, change the way that you've been doing it for them. Now, quickly, quickly, I'm coming to the reported speech. So for the reported speech, my dear teachers, start with the Gossip Queen. Okay, I have this quick video. Okay, let's jump to the session in that case because videos will take time. So take Gossip. Ask children to describe that you entered the class and what all did you do? So instead of telling them that reported speech is this is that, simply tell them, okay, I've given you all these instructions. Who was the most attentive listener today? Would you share it with us? Yes, absolutely, ma'am. I'll share the material through email also. So don't worry. So how do you describe what has just happened? So the child will say, ma'am, you walked into the class. Ma'am told us to sit quietly or ma'am asked us to take out our notebooks and stuff like that. Now, ask children that when you go and see a movie, when you come back home and you try to tell the story of the movie, to your friend, do you use the same dialogues that the actor or the actress has spoken? Or do you change them into your own language? So they change them into their own language? Yes, okay, so yes, are the responses coming in? So that, my dear children, is something that we are going to do today. That is reported speech. When you discuss something, when two of you have discussed something and you tell it to the other person, and that happens like you go back home and you tell your parents what happened in the school today you are using the structures and the uses of the reported speech here okay so again we have done what we've connected to life then you ask them to repeat what you have said then you asked one child to say it in the class hi my name is samriddhi the other one child would say okay where do you live i say it again i live in delhi I asked the third child to say, report what these three children have just talked about. So ma'am, Samridhi said that her name is Samridhi. Rohan asked her, where does she live or where she lived? Okay, then uh, she told him that she lived in Delhi. So simple. Start with these. Again, no, no, no structures to be given. Write these sentences on the board. Your children of class six, seven, and eight, they are already knowing tenses, my dear teachers. Ask them to discover the changes that are happening. If you give them the chart in the beginning, if you make three columns and tell them simple present changes to simple past, simple past changes to past perfect, and so on and so forth. No, that is again too much understanding and knowledge to remember. Why not? We let them discover like that. We let them discover the work forms. So let them discover the work forms. Let them go about doing these things and making the rules of their own. So put them in groups. Give them 10 sentences, five of direct speech, five of indirect, and ask them to do it like this. Next thing that you can do, ask them that they are at a party. So take 10 children from a class, ask them to roam about. Each child will be asking one question to the next three children. So next three children, they will be asking one question each. For example, I move to the next three children in the party whom I find comfortable with. And I say, okay, so how are you doing? The person says, I'm doing fine. To the next one, I asked another question. So what are you having? Oh, I'm having mango juice. Fine. I move to the other person. Would you be staying up late for the party? Uh, no, I would be leaving in an hour. So children, after this five minutes of conversation, and asking three questions from the crowd that they were mingling with, come back and write down their responses. Now, they are going to tell their partner or to the other class, what were the responses that these three people had given to him? Obviously, the child will not say, no, I'll be leaving in a, uh, some minutes or, hey, I'm having mango juice. No, obviously the child will change the tense and say, that that person told me that he was having mango juice okay and that person was saying yes he was having a gala time at the party so begin with these things begin with these things and then go about doing it and when you do that include elements of yesterday tomorrow and then introduce the elements of the previous day 
the day after or the next day. Start please reported speech with conversations. Do not do it in writing first. No matter it takes two classes, two periods to do it, do it that way. I'm quickly sharing a list of a couple of activities more for your reported speech. So here we go. So next is you step back, you report what is there. Miss Forgetful, we've done it. Another is Chinese whisper. So my idea, and we've also done party time. So Chinese whisper is something very simple. One child says one sentence to the other. The other one does not repeat the sentence that the child has said in the direct speech. He changes the speech and then says it to the third child. The third child will now report it again in the first uh, direct speech and then give it to the next child. So you go alternate. You reinvent Chinese whispers for classes 6 to 8 and even 9th and 10th. Fine. So that way it will become very easier for them. And then it is the party time, story model, and all these activities that you can do. Okay, so quickly now moving to passive uh, voice that we are doing. Passive voice man, simple things, show them videos and ask them for the process. Do a table uh, ping pong word, wherein you give them sugar and say sugar is far, uh, like Cuba is called the sugar bowl of the world or sugar is made from sugar cane. Then you ask them questions. <clears throat> so these are the words that you can do wherein children report by changing and interchanging. Okay, so window was broken. Again through conversation, again through blame game, again through different other things that you were doing. Then we go by slips of voice and transitive verbs. Here you're giving them voice that, okay, you have to make a sentence in active voice. The other child will have to make the sentence in passive voice. And you're giving them verb forms there. So verb forms as in break, create, write, make. And then children in together groups, the first group who has got active voice is making sentences with that. The other group who has passive voice is making sentences with the verb in the passive voice using those sentences. Then they exchange. So one sentence here the, from the active voice to the passive group, they change it to passive. One sentence from the passive to the active group and they change the sentence. The toys from trash videos are available in our online portal. So show these videos not only to make art and craft, but mute the video and ask children to describe what is happening. So when they are describing my dear teachers, when they are describing anything that they see, they are using passive voice. So those are the ideas on which you can build upon. And the last and the closing thought of the day, which I'm going to share with you is, please make a common error booklet. Because I see we are running out of the time and we have a feedback form to be filled by you. I would request my friend Amit to please share the feedback QR code as I share the last two pointers of the session. And there is a feedback form link, which also would be coming up in the uh, comment section. So please, dear teachers, fill in the feedback form so that we can get your valuable feedback on where I can improve, how we can make it more better. And also so that we can extend these participation certificates to you. Okay. So please send in your feedback on the link that will be shared. Okay. Am I audible? Okay, so moving on to the last point. Dear teachers, you would agree that 90% of the errors that children do in class are same. So rather than just simply underlining it with a red pen or a black pen and encircling it and telling children that this has a tense error, this has a subject verb work agreement error, I would suggest that you make a common error feedback booklet. Ma'am, I took <coughs> two weeks to correct 55 notebooks because I was writing small notes of feedback to every child. And I literally had an explanation call from my supervisor because you could not keep it. So 90% is same. So my dear teachers, note down all the common errors that the children have. Okay, on <clears throat> a sheet of paper, write them down here and on the other side, write down the correct form of it. 
when you write down the correct form of it next time when you go to the class and distribute the notebooks my dear teachers please ask every child to open a new page on the book or have a feedback booklet wherein they write down the common errors for this particular chapter common errors for this particular sheet and this will be their guide for the coming classes and the coming sessions the idea is to learn from everybody else's mistake there will be smart bees who will say ma'am i did not make this mistake why should i write it down tell them beta nobody made that mistake these are some mistakes that we have to be careful about so would you please write it down for me so do that and the children will be happy to support you in it class 1 to 5 you can have one feedback booklet which the child carries to class 2 3 4 5 class 6 to 10 you can have one feedback booklet there will be a poon that will be like a guide or a poonji for them as they go along learning it the next thing is dear teachers pick up any text and ask children to underline grammar concepts in it and read that paragraph without that grammar concept so pick up an english book and ask children to note down to circle all the articles to circle all the prepositions to circle all the adverbs and read those sentences without the circle words do they make sense no they don't they put out that how important are these things for the language generation and common for it so this is the last activity that i was sharing with you so give them like this is a chapter give small par paragraphs to children and ask them to highlight either of these concepts and read it without it and see if it makes sense okay and then lastly my dear teachers is the closure please do not forget to add humor to your things and the basic takeaway for today would be please start your grammar teaching with an activity recap with a game don't teach the way we were taught please use inductive bloom the lesson plans please use kwhl please focus on duration and progression contextualize do the spiraling thematically link it to the chapter make it an interdisciplinary approach please use flow charts give flow charts to children give visual impetus to them so that they are able to remember and started with listening and speaking highlight that in writing let them know in the chapter which grammar concepts let them circle it every chapter can be used for grammar practice you require no book right now let them use their previous years books to highlight these grammar concepts that could be a weekly activity that you can upload on your school website then make a common error booklet give them tips and tricks because english is a second language for them and make the grammar a way of life for all the children that you are doing so and that will be my email id my dear children teachers so okay my email id i'll just write it down it will be samriddhi.sagar@ratnasagar.com in case you have any queries any questions you can mail it to me or, or you can send it to me on my email id you can ask them even now amit i would request you to please reflect the qr code for the feedback as so that teachers can use it i'm also pasting the feedback form link to get your valuable feedback in the chat it is just that when i open the chat box my screen is getting a little slow so yes thank you so much amit okay amit i'll uh, just yeah. enable you to share screen uh, yeah, i'm please, sorry please yeah please yeah my chat box is hung all right so here we go yeah you can do it now really okay so anything in specific dear teachers you want you can even write it down in your chat okay i'm writing my email id that will be the name initials of my name that will be s a m r i d h i dot s a g a r at the rate ratnasagar dot com and like i said see the um i see that may if you are asking if there's a blog or anything no dear teachers <laughs> there's no blog i have a job <laughs> so and all the activities that i have shared and picked up are also taken from many of the ratna saga books that we have so you can make use of those and let me know your responses yeah so this is the qr code that we are sharing with you for the feedback in case 
you're not yes that's right ma'am i'm just typing it my chat box is slow oh, okay so i can't see if it's typing right yeah so just scan the qr code and the feedback form will open in your systems and you will be able to fill in the feedback okay here comes my email id finally I think at the end of the session, suddenly my chat box has slowed down. Okay, so it's again, I've written it down, my dear teachers. Thank you so much for joining us today. And like I said, please remember to go by the inductive approach of grammar teaching and living the passion. You see, if you teach grammar or English as a subject, it will be tedious, it will be boring. Similarly, as you teach the mother tongue at home, as you make children conscious, we have Hindi mein pehle nahi bataya gaya ki ye bhut kaal hai, ye vartaman kaal hai. Nahi na? And another thing, how many times do you speak grammatically correct mother tongue? I make it wrong all the time. Okay, Punjabi is another of my mother tongues here, but I cannot say the right way of speaking Punjabi. So we are not conscious of speaking our mother tongue. We make a lot of grammar errors, but I do not know why when it comes to English, we become an grammar authoritarian, we jump to judging the structures, we jump to correcting each other. So for little children, let them have fluency first. They are using language in day-to-day -day life, they are aware about it. It is important to just let them discover the rules on their own. Not the rules if you want, I would say the patterns. Let them discover the patterns, let them make connections. And that is how they realize that this age teachers as competent as you are because you are quick to pick up the online teaching you are giving them a food for thought you are giving them things which they can connect with life and that is how the children will remember and enjoy grammar it is not like i say one more time that 15 marker it is not that 15 marker it is not that 10 marker it is beyond the fill in the blanks the activities the one word questions a one short answers that come in okay so yes we'll paste uh, the link again of the feedback uh amit can we paste the feedback link again yeah okay uh, thank you so much ma'am for the enriching session uh now i would like to mr rakesh chalhotra he is a sales team member to give a vote of thanks please rakesh thank you uh, thank you very much it, uh, it was thank an informative you. session and i believe that all the participants found this worthwhile now I would like to thank all the teachers and we appreciate your active participation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you. Rakesh. Yeah. Yes, I'm ready, ma'am. Please continue. Nothing. I'm just saying my screen has got slow. I can't do anything. I can't remove the spotlight from me. Thank you so much, participants, for attending today's webinar. I mean, I would request to please paste in the feedback link one more time, like just paste it multiple times so that uh, teachers can see it. Please paste it in the chat. And thank you so much for all the people who joined us on uh, Facebook as well. And we hope you're keeping safe and we wish you a very happy and enjoyable weekend. Weekends should always be like having fun. And like I say, teachers, during the lockdown, use this time to make all these cards, to introduce all these activities, because once we reopen, once we resume, there's going to be no time. And you can do it in your online sessions as well, through private chat, by showing pictures to children, by asking them to refer to things. So thank you so much one more time for joining us today and making this session a very inclusive session and interactive by your bundle of comments that you have sent us in the chat. So <clears throat> Sahil, are you there? Hi, Samriti, I am here. My internet connection is not really good. Doesn't matter. Could you please paste the link in the chat? I've pasted it multiple times, but it is again floating back to at least invisible length. 
because there's many comments coming in. So thank you so much, yeah, teachers, yeah. for your thank yous and your gratitude. Yeah, I'm just saying that. Yeah, flowing in the chat box because I can't seem to see that. <coughs> Sorry. All right, so thank you so much teachers and thank you so much to the complete Punjab, Himachal and Jammu team for arranging for the session and going to the length and breadth of your technical and the virtual world for involving teachers from across the North India. So thank you so much. One more thing, ma'am, uh, we'll just submit uh, the link again because I see so many teachers, a uh, couple of teachers are saying that the form is not opening. So give me a minute, I'll just paste it one more time. Okay, so here I have pasted it again, ma'am. It is a Google form. I think you're not audible. Hello. Okay, thank you so much. Nice I see the link is yeah. now visible mm. and many of you have already submitted the feedback. So do fill in the feedback form teachers. If you can't get time after this workshop, do it in some time because it's very important that we receive your feedback and also that we can have your complete details so that we can create uh, the uh, certificates of participation for you. So now that's how we call it the day today. Have a wonderful weekend and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. So let's call it a day, huh? Sahil, my window is not responding. I think they have all filled the feedback form, no? Just a second. Yeah, Meet. Yeah. Uh, one haven't filled, uh, Kavita Chaudhary, ma'am. I've just Achha, forwarded Amit, the link. Uh, yeah. yeah. Amit, uh, yeah. one thing, uh, Sahil, could you please give him the feedback form on Facebook? Buddy, my chat is not responding at all. My system is slowing down completely. Okay, uh, Amit, could you just paste the feedback form one more time on? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm frequently you, uh, like, pasting uh, it. Let's, yeah. hold, let's hold the QR code for five more minutes. Uh, okay, okay, let me. Uh, for Facebook because I'm not able to access Facebook alongside this. So if you could just hold it there. Yeah, perfect. So all the uh, users and the viewers who join us through Facebook, dear teachers, I'm sorry, I'm not able to access that right now. So this is the QR code for it. And my friend and my colleague uh, from the marketing department would just share a feedback form link on Facebook. 
and that would be help that will help you out to engage with us more and share your feedback so we'll hold it there for a couple of minutes before we finally close All right then. Thank you, Amit, and thanks to the uh, whole team. Okay, so I'm closing the meeting now. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, Amit. Uh, yeah. Pleasure is all mine, I must say. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. -bye.